Beneath the vast emptiness of the Pacific Ocean, the largest tectonic plate on the planet may be starting to fracture. Strange earthquakes are appearing where they should never exist. Volcanoes are punching through solid rock, and sections once thought unbreakable are peeling away. If this giant is truly cracking, the consequences could reshape not just the Pacific, but the future of earthquakes and volcanic activity worldwide. So how close are we to a breaking point? The Pacific Plate is a titan, a single slab of crust larger than North America and Eurasia combined. It covers nearly a third of Earth's surface and drifts northwest at almost 11 centimeters a year. Fast, powerful, immense. For decades, scientists believed this massive plate was essentially solid, rigid enough to transmit stress across thousands of kilometers. It was the geological equivalent of a steel beam, steady and predictable. At least that was the assumption because deep beneath the Pacific, that illusion of stability is beginning to unravel. For most of Earth's history, tectonic plates only broke at their edges at subduction zones, transformed faults, and spreading ridges. But then the Pacific Plate began breaking the rules. Tiny deformations appeared in regions once considered completely stable, and soon after came the earthquakes, moderate muted tremors occurring far from any known fault line. For geologists, it was like discovering cracks inside the core support beam of a skyscraper. These quakes were not massive, but their locations were alarming. They were rumbling straight through the interior of the plate. This was the first undeniable sign that the Pacific Plate was no longer a flawless slab, but a puzzle of hidden fractures. Some ancient, others unsettlingly new. Earthquakes normally follow a script. They happen where plates collide, grind, or sink. But in the Central Pacific, the new quakes followed no script at all. Near Hawaii, swarms shook the seafloor far from any boundary. Elsewhere in the mid-Pacific, isolated tremors struck regions long considered geologically silent. Individually small, but together they formed a pattern, a message. The plate was straining from the inside as if deeper forces were twisting it in ways it was never built to endure. Scientists knew what this meant. A supposedly solid plate was beginning to bend, and bending plates eventually break. Then came the smoking gun. Some of the strangest interior quakes clustered around volcanic hotspots places where plumes of magma rise from deep in the mantle like blowtorches. Hawaii is the most famous example. Each island in the chain marks a moment when the Pacific Plate passed over one of these plumes. But here is what caught scientists off guard. Every eruption required the plate to crack open not at an edge but through its own interior, like a sheet of steel pierced again and again by rising molten rock. The dramatic bend in the... Hawaiian Emperor Seamount Chain nearly 60 degrees around 47 million years ago proves how powerful these forces once were. They shifted the entire direction of the plate. This is not a plate that simply drifts. It reacts twists and reshapes under enormous internal stress. And Hawaii is not alone. Across the South Pacific hotspots beneath Samoa Tahiti and other island chains tell the same story. Rising magma is exploiting weaknesses inside the plate. Volcanoes are forming where no major faults exist and fractures are spreading outward in patterns scientists are only now beginning to map. But the volcanoes were not the biggest surprise. The biggest surprise was what began breaking off. The Pacific Plate is no longer whole. Geologists have identified fragments microplates splintering from the main body. These pieces form where spreading ridges and transform faults intersect in chaotic zones called triple junctions. As the plate pushes forward, stress concentrates at these weak points until the crust literally tears apart. Over millions of years, these splinters can grow, rotate, and carve the once monolithic plate into a new mosaic of smaller pieces. This is not speculation. It is already happening. And it is not the first time Earth has watched a giant plate collapse. Tens of millions of years ago, the massive Farallon Plate dominated the eastern Pacific. Today, almost nothing remains. It was swallowed beneath North America piece by piece, leaving behind only fragments the Cocos Plate, the Nazca Plate, and the Juan de Fuca Plate. And one of these remnants, the Juan de Fuca Plate, now drives one of the deadliest seismic threats on the planet. The Cascadia subduction zone, capable of magnitude 9 megathrust earthquakes, ocean-crossing tsunamis, and coastlines reshaped in minutes. Farallon offers a simple lesson. No plate, no matter how big, is immune to destruction. And now the Pacific Plate is showing the same early symptoms. The instability of the Pacific Plate is more than an academic puzzle. It is a direct threat to the 800 million people living along its perimeter. The Ring of Fire already produces 75% of Earth's active volcanoes and 90% of its earthquakes, including some of the largest eruptions in human history. But if the plate is cracking internally, stress will not stay trapped beneath the ocean. It will migrate outward, redistributing pressure along its boundaries in unpredictable ways. A fracture in the middle can translate to chaos at the edges.
This means subduction zones already primed for disaster, such as Cascadia, Japan's, Nankai Trough, and the Chilean Trench, could become even more unstable. And that leads to the larger question, what happens if this colossal plate truly begins to tear apart? Some scientists believe it could eventually split into two or more massive plates divided along weaknesses already forming in the South Pacific. Others think it will slowly shrink as subduction consumes it at its edges. And some propose an even more dramatic future a new spreading center could open and the Pacific Ocean could begin evolving into an entirely new basin. These transformations unfold over millions of years, but their earliest signs can appear much sooner, and those signs may already be emerging. Microplates in the South Pacific breaking free. Hotspot volcanoes forcing magma through the plate's interior. Mysterious quakes shaking regions where no quakes should exist. These are not isolated anomalies. They are pieces of a larger pattern, a pattern pointing toward one unsettling possibility. The Pacific Plate is entering a new phase of its life defined by internal stress, spreading fractures, and rising instability. And the timing matters. If pressure is already shifting within the plate, then the planet's most dangerous subduction zones may be closer to failure than we assume. Cascadia last ruptured in 1700, sending a tsunami across the Pacific to Japan. Japan's Tohoku quake in 2011 triggered a chain of cascading disasters. Chile's 1960 earthquake, the strongest ever recorded, reached magnitude 9.5. All of these events began at plate edges. Now imagine those same faults being pushed from both sides, pressure from internal fractures feeding directly into boundary zones already operating near their limits. Subduction zones forced to absorb strain they were never meant to take. This is the scenario scientists fear most internal cracking triggering external catastrophe. The Pacific Plate is restless, its interior is changing, its boundaries are tightening, and the signals rising from the deep ocean are becoming harder to ignore. Earth's largest tectonic plate will not remain unchanged. It will evolve, it will fracture, and one day it will fail. The only question left is this when the Pacific Plate finally breaks what will break with it.